thanks again for tuning back into the channel. In this week's video, we are going to be looking at a small Photoshop trick that I employ to finish my images. And now the reason I use it is because I've noticed with printed images, sometimes the images are just too clean. So I like to noise them up slightly. And it just gives me the effect that I am looking for with a majority of my images. Now this all stems from my love of movie posters and just when I was growing up they were all hand drawn and hand painted and it's also to do with relative viewing distance if you understand what that is as well. I won't go into it in this video perhaps in another but the works of for example Drew Struzan all hand painted and just beautiful works for the movie posters. Now I always wanted to recreate that feel of the poster. I can't recreate the actual images, they're just too good, but I always wanted to recreate that feel of the posters. And this technique that I use, for me, I think just does that and finishes my images the way I want them to be. So if you have a look at this image here, I'm going to turn on both of these layers. So you'll notice a slight difference there, perhaps not too much, and then quite a big difference there, and that's just by using some colours within the scene. It is this layer here. Now I'll turn this off and I'll zoom in. So you look at that, it's quite sharp image created. In this case, she was created in mid-journey but it's too sharp and too clean for me and I need more depth in the image. So by simply adding that, it makes a massive effect for the final effect that I'm after. And then, as you saw, I turn that image on as well. So if I turn that off, it's still too clean. So it's this layer here that we are going to be focusing on and showing you how to create. So if I zoom back out, and I'll just take here. And now what I'm going to do is, you'll notice that that one is pink. So I'll just follow the same process for this. So I'm going to create a new layer. And in this new layer, I'll label this one magenta so that you can see that it's this layer we're working on. And as you notice, the pink's already selected. And how I selected that was just by simply going over one of the pink areas in here. I can't honestly remember what one. It definitely wasn't that one. Perhaps down in here that again is too light. Let's take perhaps this one there. So the effect that we get from this is going to be slightly different to the original here. With this layer selected, go into the flood fill tool which is the paint bucket and flood fill it. And this is it. This is what we add to the image. So if we go in here to filter and noise, and we go in and we add noise, and you can see it there. We have the Gaussian bar and monochromatic, and we can increase this at any stage whatsoever. But a good thing to do before you do that is right click here, and convert it to a smart object. So is that at a later point, you can go in and adjust the noise again, should you not like it for your image. So filter, noise, add noise. So I am going to just go in here, we'll just try that, just to see what it's like. Now I have monochromatic on, and I don't have uniform on, because I'm not so keen on the effect that it gives. So I normally add just the Gaussian but it's entirely again up to you how you do this and then just click OK. So now comes the opacity of this to get the effect you're after and what I normally do is I'll take it right back down to zero, zoom into an area like that, it's quite clean and I'll start dialing it in until it gets to the point where I am happiest. Now previously to this image here, it used to be around seven would be my maximum. But that also depends on the type of blending mode you have for the layer. Now, because I've done this one before, I know that Vivid Light is the one that I want for this. So I'm going to leave it at that and let's just try it about 10. Let's 8, 9, 10. 
10, perhaps a bit too much, so let's take it back to about 8. We'll go for 8 with this one. And turn that on and off, and you will see already the difference that makes. 8 is perhaps a bit too much, so let's take it back to 7. And you'll see already the difference that makes to your image. If I zoom out, it's not visible to the naked eye until you start zooming in. This will also help when it comes to printing your images because of relative distance. And for example, if I've got that, if I like a nice clean image, I would leave it there. But I know that that will have more effect within it. And as you can see, that's perhaps not the correct colour compared to the darker tone up here. And then for the final touch, it's simply a coloured layer, again with a selection from somewhere in the image. So we started with this, we added a smart object noise layer, which I can go in and adjust at any time I want, simply by double clicking on here, I can add more noise, I can take the noise back down, I'm going to hit cancel, quite happy where it was. And then just by simply adding a color layer, by selecting a color within the image, and in this case, a soft light blend. And here we have another couple of images with it added. And in this one particularly, you don't see too much of a difference until it's added, but it's meant to be subtle. And as you can see, that one's at 7% as well. Another thing I can do, I'll zoom in and show you this. So you can see that there on her face, take it off. The skin is too smooth for me, which is a massive thing when you are creating sections of images using Mid Journey. Put that back on and it helps to blend it back through. The other thing that you can do as well is you can invert it. So you notice I just selected the area here and then Control and I. So you've got that inversion method depending on what you want from your image. Here's another one as well, and you can see that that is too clean, in my opinion. So in this case, I have added even more noise to it, just to get that final effect. Now for me, this is the way I like my images to be. If I wanted a really clean image, very, very simple to do, but I like that added green or noise. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it just lets you see the difference it made to the images. And that is especially if you are using cutouts from, for example, AI generated works to complete your images. Now I find that really good. I'm also finding now that with the AI side of things, it's getting a lot better. So I'll still use the technique, but now the skin isn't just as perfect and pristine found a few ways and a few prompts to change that. You'll also see that in a future video if you want to know about that as well. Thanks again for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.